There's a bit of what looks like red ink or something on here. Hang on a minute. There's a bit of silver ink as well. Hey, that's weird. Hello everybody. Yesterday was free comic book day. I do like a bit of free. And I was in Birmingham for completely unrelated reasons and realised that there is not one, but two comic book shops in Birmingham, therefore enabling me to get as much free as possible. Indeed, I've brought something to drink because we could be here for a while. The first place that I went to was Forbidden Planet, their flagship store on Bull Street. And we were handed this bag as we came in, which contained some things, but they also had some stuff out on tables that you could also pick up. Da, 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 da. So in here, you'll notice the first thing is not a comic. It is, in fact, the Joker. It looks like a voodoo doll. I think it's a key ring, but it could be a key ring voodoo doll. There's no reason why you couldn't have both of those things. So that was very cool. Then inside the bag, and I haven't really looked at these properly, so it could be as exciting to me as it is to you. We have Doctor Who. My Hero Academia. This is where I happily admit that my knowledge of comics is almost zero. So I keep hearing about this one and I was seeing it in the manga shop and I don't know what it is, but people are going, oh, oh, My Hero Academia. So I'm assuming that this is the latest in thing. You're going to have to tell me in the comments about all of these because I haven't got a clue. I know Justice League though, so we've got Dear Justice League. Features two chapters from the upcoming graphic novel. Then DC... Year of the Villain, The Batman Who Laughs, Legion of Doom, The Dark Secret of Leviathan, The Most Dangerous Summer Event starts here. And it was free, so that was cool. I've just noticed, actually, it actually says uh, only 25 cents. Well, it was only nothing. Then, <gasps> very exciting, somebody was going, oh, there's Avengers in here, there's Avengers in here, and there wasn't, look, there's Captain Marvel! So I got some free Captain Marvel of some description, Savage Avengers. Savage Avengers. I don't know what that means, but look, it's number one, so hopefully there'll be many more of those. Then, underneath that, some of you will be very excited. There's Spider-Man. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. But that's not a spider, that's disgusting and horrible. It actually says Spider-Man versus Spider-Man. Where he's going, how dare you, stop picking on me. Don't know what any of that means. And then we've got... Lauren Miracle Under the Moon, a Catwoman tale, includes a preview of Teen Titans Raven. I'm not very happy with the Teen Titans at the moment. I will tell you why. I went to McDonald's thinking they were doing Avengers Happy Meal toys. I was like, I'll just pick one up. No, it was Teen Flipping Titans. So all of these got adverts for other things. This one is telling me to binge read them all. You need to binge read all the novels. This one, um, Venom. Avengers has got War of the Realms on the back of it. Then, uh, oh, there's a huge advert for Forbidden Planet. Uh, then we've got DC Superhero Girls, which seems to be a sort of cartoon version of Supergirl and Wonder Woman and the other ones. <clears throat> My Hero Academia, you might not realise this, but it actually opens the traditional Japanese way. And that's got lots of Japanese adverts on the back of it. And then Doctor Who has an advert for Doctor Who. So that was all pretty cool, but it turned out that not all of the bags were the same. And they also had some t stuff out on a table, which is where Joker came from. So somebody very kindly gave me their Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Firefly comic, because I was very disappointed not to get it. The, the advert on the back of this has got um, Giant Spider Invasion. I think I can do with less giant spider invasion. I'm perfectly okay with not knowing what that is. But then they had other stuff out on the table and I didn't realise. So I've accidentally picked up a duplicate of Year of the Villain. And I've actually picked up what looked like a duplicate of Doctor Who. But it turns out it's not a duplicate. It is different. The cover is different and the, the innards seem to be different as well. So that was a pretty good haul just for the bag. But then... I went to Worlds Apart, which used to be called Nostalgia and Comics until very, very recently. It's just outside New Street Station. Sorry, Giant Spider Invasion is just putting me off again here. That's really horrible. 
they had absolutely stacks, and I do mean stacks, loads of different ones, and you just went in and you could pick five from any of the maybe 20 that they had on the table, and that was difficult because I didn't know who quite a lot of them were, so I kind of went for things that I recognised. One of those things, of course, is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Heroes in a half shell, who look a lot more violent than I remember them. But it was 35 years of the turtles. I thought it was quite important to get that one. Then, this next one, I've just watched the series on Amazon. The Tick, which is a bit silly, but it made me laugh in places. I thought the character was quite good. So I thought that picking that one up would not be a bad idea because I thought it might be a bit of a laugh. New stories and suitable for all ages. Then, I'm going to admit, I've not watched the series, but I thought it was probably culturally important to pick this one up. Stranger Things, it has an advert on the back for Black Hammer 45. The whole weird pulpy world is so fun and gorgeous. Black Hammer is the maddest, most brilliant comic I've read in years. So there you go. Then... I chose Pokemon. I couldn't resist. I went for people and things that I recognised. And this one, again, is a Japanese one that you read the other way round. It also had a pretty rainbow and a ho-oh on it. It says Pokemon the movie, but it also features Pokemon adventures. So I thought that was cool. I also saw the trailer for Detective Pikachu when I went to the cinema. What is that about? Anyway, that's a completely different video, which I'm not going to do. It was really difficult to choose a last one because there were so many and there were quite a few things that I didn't recognise, which I really fancied, but I wanted to be honest so I didn't sneak any extra ones. Instead, I picked up one that I thought some of you might be interested in. Captain Canuck. It says specifically, who is the new Captain Canuck? Because there's an awful lot of new superheroes around at the moment with people taking stuff over. There seems to be an awful lot of superheroes on here, so I don't know whether there's a kind of Canadian Avengers type thing going on, but I'm sure you'll be able to tell me. I thought I'd find out for myself. So that was really cool. I got a huge haul of free things, and then I discovered Forbidden Planet's £2 bundles. Don't say I didn't warn you. We are going to be here for a while. The woman in the queue tipped me off that Forbidden Planet was selling £2 comic bundles. It might be that they do this all the time, but she was quite specific about the fact that it would definitely be on free comic book day. So I thought, well, I might as well have a look and see what they've got and just pick up some stuff and just experience a few new worlds. As you can see, I'm probably going to end up experiencing potentially dozens of new worlds. I had a really good rummage through them because they're all different. They've all got one comic on the front and one comic on the back. And I just picked up ones where I either liked the artwork or I had a very, very, very quick search as to what the storyline was about or just completely at random. But because they're bundled up randomly, you can't get, or generally can't get, both of the ones that you want in one pack. So that was how I accidentally ended up picking up this one twice and had to go back and swap them out. So thank you very much Forbidden Planet for stopping me from being an idiot. So we got them to the till and he said that's eight pounds please. I thought eight pounds. I'm sure this was 16 pounds worth and then I suddenly realised they were not just two pound bundles, they were buy one get one free two pound bundles. So I suppose it is possible that they always have the two pound bundles and I've just never noticed but on comic book day they are buy one get one free. In any event I brought as much as I could carry and there was more. Definitely could have got a few more. I haven't unpacked any of these because I wanted you to be as surprised as I'm going to be. I actually thought that there were only three comics in each of these bundles, but it turns out on closer inspection that there are four. And that means that some of the ones that I didn't manage to pick up could actually be randomly included in any of these bundles, which would be amazing. Whew, this is going to take a while. Let's do it. I'll talk you through what I've chosen. Bundle number one, which has transference. I really liked the look of this. It's got Kennedy assassination on it. And I was like, oh, is there a time travel thing going on in this one? And there is. So I was really pleased to get that. I say that's the one that I was so desperate to get, but I accidentally picked it up twice. On the back, it's, well, who, who knows? Some of these are marked with over 18 only. This one just looks particularly strange. It's somebody's grandmother dressed in a cocktail dress with a load of wires coming out of a helmet on her head. Over 18s only, kids. Let's see what's in here. I'm so excited. This is like 
opening trading card packs, which, as you know, I do particularly enjoy. So, just got to be a little bit careful to get these out without doing any damage. Da, 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 da. Right, I've got transference. Oh, I've also got issue four of We Stand on Guard, and we're going to come back to that. It's like a post-apocalyptic thing set in Canada. We're going to come back to that one. Then we have something called Welcome to Showside, which I don't remember being on the shelves at all. Actually says local comic shop day. So maybe this was specially produced. Then on the back, weirdness. I'll tell you what that one's like. And there's an advert for young terrorists. It's violent, aggressive and taps into an undercurrent of rage. In this next pack, the first one is issue one of Rivers of London. And I picked this up especially because I very quickly searched for this and it looks like the sort of thing that I could get into. Apparently it's got loads of dry British humour in it. And they actually had different issues of this in different packs all the way up to number five. So I've managed to get one, two and three and I'm just going to have to really hope that I don't like it that much that I wish that I'd got four and five. Similarly, they might actually be in here because mystery. On the back... Assassin's Creed. There were quite a lot of Assassin's Creed ones. Pretty cool. This is another one marked over 18s only. I'm going to be distressed when I've read all of these. I'm going to have seen all sorts of things that I can't unsee. What you won't be able to unsee is me brutalising the corners of these comics. Come out. As I say, Rivers of London. There's a bit of what looks like red ink or something on here. Hang on a minute. There's a bit of silver ink as well. Hey, that's weird. Did the first one have like a printed autograph on it or something? Or is that autographed? That's a bit strange. If you know the answer to that one, please do let me know, because if that's signed, that would be um, stunning. Then, oh no, got granny again. Great. Then I saw this one on one of the other packs, Indoctrination Chapter 1, Prophets, Sheep and Those Who Chase. I don't know what that means, but it looked pretty cool, so I'm glad to get that one. And then at the back, as I've said, Assassin's Creed. But this is actually issue 9 from June 2016, and it's cover C. Because that's the other thing about comics, isn't it? They all have a load of different covers, and some are worth more than others, and it's very confusing. It's a bit like chase cards. It's very frustrating. And they did have loads of variant covers in these packs, so I gave up in the end because I just don't know. And I'm not doing this for resale. I'm doing this because I want to read some new stuff. So this is issue two of Rivers of London. A bit worried about the over 18s only. If I get granny again, I'm not going to be very happy. Underneath, Paper Girls 1. Now, I've actually got Paper Girls 1 in one of the other packs, and I hope I don't really like this, because Paper Girls 2 was in one of the other ones. I'm kicking myself for not getting it. If any of you live in Birmingham, I'll be sending you back to get me stuff. Got a Doctor Who comic. There were quite a few of these. I'm not a huge fan of Doctor Who, but it's a character that I know. This is part two of five of one of the Christopher Eccleston ones. August 2016 actually says a Doctor Who comics event. It's not enough to just be a comic anymore. It's got to be an event. And then Clandestino. Blank variant cover. This is not glossy. This is got a sort of matte finish to it. They had Clandestino with a cover with him on it. So I suppose it's possible that this is the variant cover. Keep that clean. This one is issue three of Rivers of London. As I say, I wanted to get as many as I could carry, but it was so difficult to choose between everything. I just ended up standing there going, I don't even know, and I might hate all of them. I thought it was worth a shot. On the back, we have to get rid of this because I don't want to look at it anymore. We have enormous I don't know who enormous is, but it's horrible. And I don't really want to look at somebody's bizarre exploding head. So we'll get rid of that. Now this is a body on the floor in this one. So that's Rivers of London issue three. Then, oh, looks like I've got Doctor Who again. I have. This time it is the 12th Doctor. And this says New York Comic Con. So I've been all around the world with these. And then the one with the big Star Wars advert on the back is Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Issue six. Hey, that's kind of cool. Apparently there is a 
bonus digital edition of this as well. This one's got a doff corner, which is incredibly frustrating, not because I think these have got any resale value, but just simply because I hate doffed up corners. And there was another one of these that didn't have a doffed up corner, so that's incredibly annoying. Can you iron out doffed up corners? I suppose it's possible. I got this because uh, it's written by, I think, Kelly Sue DeConnick, who did some of the Captain Marvel ones, and I quite like the writing. So I thought it would be worth getting that. Pretty deadly. I looked it up and it said something about it combining... Okay, I can see why this is over 18s. It said something about combining folklore and mythology and modern day stuff, so I thought, why not? Then, oh, I have Heroes Vengeance issue one. Now we're going to come back to Heroes because I did get another Heroes one as well. Not deliberately, it was on the back of something else. I think then... I think the other one might be issue one as well, meaning that I've got the normal cover and the variant cover. It says it's a prelude to the TV series Heroes Reborn. I think we're going to see that in another guise. Yeah, New York Comic Con cover, so we're going to see that again in a different guise. Then, M&M's. M&M's. I was really hoping that would be a comic about M&M's, but actually... It's the Punisher, number one, and it says parental advisory not for kids. I'm going to be so disturbed by the time I've read all of these. Underneath that is a very nice advert for businessandplanet.com. But this is Independence Day. This one was absolutely everywhere. Again, it's something that I recognise. So if this is a comic version of Independence Day, I'll probably be pretty pleased with that because I can read through a story that I already know. We move on to the first one that I picked up because it just made me laugh. I don't know anything about it. Superhuman Resources. <laughs> Couldn't resist. This is Superhuman Resources number one. I just thought it was brilliant, the idea of just a chap who works in human resources <laughs> developing a jetpack. On the back of this one is Dishonored. And it has the worrying over 18s only sticker again. Look out for Granny. So underneath Superhuman Resources is... An advert for Marvel Superheroes Lego. Smosh Dynamite number two, which has got Mario Brothers. I'm not very up on pop culture, but I do recognise that name. And if they're dressed as the Mario Brothers and it's got Lego superheroes on the back of it, then that sounds like something I might enjoy. Underneath that, there is actually an advert for a Green Goblin Pro Silicon Mask. <laughs> which is on the back of Doctor Who again. This is Doctor Who number one. Again, New York Comic Con cover. The 11th Doctor Adventures Year 2. And then Dishonoured. And if you want to know, there is a book. Next up, I chose this because it's Sherlock. I thought that would be quite an interesting story. And on the back, we've got one we've already seen. Because it's Paper Girls. I'm not doing too badly on the old duplicates. I was worried I'd get the same thing about a thousand times. Sherlock is the same on the front and the back. Then, oh, there's an advert for Rivers of London. A brand new Rivers of London graphic novel set between Broken Homes and Foxglove Summer. Pretty much perfect essential reading. Don't tell me that, because I'm going to wish I'd got issues four and five. Um, and that happens to be issue four. Result. M&M's advert again. Yep, so I've got a duplicate of The Punisher and I've got a duplicate of Paper Girls. Completely at randomly, because they just kind of looked cool. We've got what I believe is... Let's just get the price tag off here. Sun Bakery. <laughs> Don't have a clue what that means, but you know, bakery. I thought the artwork looked really good because all of the characters have actually got their stats or their, their, their abilities on here, which I thought was brilliant. And then on the back, Generation Zero. Just reminded me very slightly of Mirror's Edge. So we'll just have to see whether the comic inside is also to my interests. Over 18s again, so we're on Granny Watch. So, yes, Generation Zero number one, which has the scariest thing ever on the back of it. On the fringes of civilization, the world's first detective is about to make an unholy discovery. Britannia! Are you sure we're not talking about Britannia Hotels? Because you do meet some people who look like that in Britannia Hotels. Then Independence Day again. Oh, Rivers of London number five. That's so lucky. That's ridiculous. Brilliant. And, oh, look at this. The artwork is really cool on both sides. This is number three. Oh, check that out. 
all of the pages are super bright. That looks like it could be a good one. Just have to see whether it's over 18s. Next up, I went for this Femme Magnifique, 10 Magnificent Women Who Changed the World. And on the back of it is a bloke who changed the world. It's Conan the Barbarian, issue one. Again, character that I know. I think we might be okay with this one, kids. Oh no, hang on a minute, it says 18YG. Does that mean that it's one of these 18 ones again? Or is that just a code for something else? So, Conan the Barbarian, who looks a bit blue. It's got an advert for Marvel Strike Force on the back. Then, ooh, Batman. Batman 67. Hey, that's cool. And it has an advert for Shazam on the back of it, so this must be a really recent one. Hey, that's excellent. Nice. Then, oh, I've got an advert for Shazam again. Oh, it's Superman this time. Oh, brilliant. I've got some characters I really know. I really like Superman. I haven't liked his recent films. But reading a comic, yeah, definitely. That's brilliant. And then, say, on the back, Femme Magnifique. On Femme Magnifique, 50 Magnificent Women Who Changed the World, part biographical, part inspirational, but you'll be left feeling like you can do just about anything. Winner of Comic-Con.com's Most Progressive Award. Cool! So I've got 10 of the 50. That's awesome. Then, last pack, I deliberately got the first issue of We Stand On Guard because I just thought that it looked quite good. And on the back here is Shiny Heroes Vengeance. I think this is the same issue as we saw a few minutes ago, what feels like hours ago, but it's got the San Diego Comic-Con International 2015 cover. So there we go, we've got some shiny. I actually really like that one, even if I didn't particularly want it at the time. Then I've got Doctor Who again, which is a Jetpack Comics exclusive. On the, the back it says, we love Doctor Who. We live Doctor Who. That's New Adventures with the 11th Doctor. Then, oh, welcome to Showside again. This one is still in its packaging. Okay, and last but not least, secretly I got this because I thought some of you would be interested in it as well. We stand on guard. So I've got issues one and four. Well, I'm really thrilled about what I've ended up with in here. I've got some all-time classic characters, which we all know and love. I've got some things that I recognise, like Doctor Who and Star Wars and computer game comics and Conan. I've managed to get the first few issues of one that I really fancied reading without having to buy a couple of them. And I've also managed to get some weird looking stuff. Some things that I would probably have never tried in a thousand years if I hadn't gone to this and picked up these bundles. Months and months and months of reading here. <laughs> it's going to take me ages but if you recognize any of these or you're a fan of any of these or you think that any of these are going to be particularly good then please do let me know in the comments because this isn't really my area if it's yours i want to hear from you over 18s only folks i am very very pleased if you manage to get down to your local free comic book day please let me know what you got i didn't realize beforehand you can actually go and look them up and kind of target certain comics that you want but hey, I think I've got pretty much everything I would have taken anyway, so whew, let's begin. Not with Granny. Hello again. Just a quick post-event debriefing because I was so excited when I did all of this that there was something that I missed. That was that the Welcome to Showside comic is actually not a duplicate. It's two different covers. For the first one is Local Comic Book Day and the other one is the Jetpack exclusive. What I really wanted to do was come back to this. Having looked at this a little bit more, I think that this first issue of Rivers of London is actually autographed. I need to go off and do some cross-referencing and some research, and that's the reason I wasn't getting really excited in the video, because I was worried that if I did, I might find that I was being stupid and all of the issues look like that, in which case I'd be a prat. But if that is a genuine autograph, the way that I came past this is the most extraordinary story of chance I decided at the last minute to go back to Forbidden Planet and ask them if I could swap out the stupid duplicate that I'd picked up. And they said yes, and when I went back to the shelves, I discovered the first issue of Rivers of London, which I'd been looking for at length and simply could not find it, but there it was. Now that was along with one or two others that I hadn't noticed before, so perhaps they were refilling the shelves. 
Whatever the case, I just grabbed at it because I was so desperate to find it. When I picked it up, I did notice the bit of red ink and thought, oh, that's a real shame that that has been ruined or drawn on or something has happened with it. I had no idea that it could actually be an autograph. And it's only now, as I think about it, that that is probably all that it can be. That is an amazing pickup, if that's the case, to not just find that first issue that I didn't think that I'd managed to get, but for it to also be autographed by presumably an artist, the writer, whoever those are, that's madness. That couldn't have gone any better. It's just extraordinary. So I'm going to go off and do some research. I'm going to find out and I will let you know if that is a genuine autograph on there. If it isn't, as I say, I reserve the right to not look too stupid about it. 